Hi, quick announcement. This is an ongoing audio drama show. If this is your first time listening, you're going to want to go back to episode one and come forward from there. If you are all caught up, I'm so excited to have new episodes for you. Please enjoy Believer, season one, episode six, The Rules. You have unheard messages. First message. Not saying that time either. Ugh. Well, then where is her phone? It wasn't on her. Maybe we should... Next message. Lara Campbell, you are in danger. Lara Campbell, you are in danger. End of messages. Believer. Episode 6. The Rules. Good morning, Laura. Ah! Oh, oh. H- how's your head? Pounding. Oh, yeah, you probably have a pretty bad hangover. There's water and pills by the bed if you want any. Yeah, right there. I'm not taking medicine from you. It's just aspirin, Laura. Uh-huh. Do you want me to take it first? Here. See? Well, now it has your spit on it, so... Get more from the bottle. I'm good. At least drink some water. It's filtered. I'm good. This isn't how I wanted to do this, you know? The kidnapping, you mean? It's not kidnapping. You drugged me and took me to a concrete room. Is this your basement? Does your mom know about this? Hey, Dr. Simmons! Shh, be quiet. Don't touch me. Laura, I'm a friend. <laughs> That's what I thought before the kidnapping. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I just had to get you out of the sanctum. Reverend Boone's old church? It used to be a church. Now it's something more. Oh, God. Only Reverend Boone and his daughter are allowed to go there. I've been asking, but it, it's very sacred and dangerous. It takes weeks of study and meditation to be ready. Because it's full of psychedelic substances, and if you don't brainwash yourself first, you might have the wrong visions? This was a mistake. Like I was saying. You, you're you not ready to be here Oh, God. Camille? Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, my God. Camille, it's okay. You can just you can just let me go. No, 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 no. I need to think. Camille? Sit here. I'll be... I'll be right back. Camille, wait! Drink some water. Camille? Camille! Can someone at least check on my dog? Maybe Jake will notice I'm gone. No... Where am I? I know, right? Actual cult kidnapping. (laughs) It's like there was some kind of creepy small town checklist this place was working from. (sighs) Yeah, anyway, they put me in this small concrete room underground. It was probably supposed to be a storage closet. One window up high, (sighs) too high to reach, naturally. But the really interesting thing... Wait. What is that? All over the room. The floor, the walls, there were these... scratch marks. Long, shallow grooves crossing every surface. At first it seemed random, but... Wow. It was a pattern, I think. The lines converged, or maybe began in this tangle in the middle of the room. The lines would loop out and away from each other and then converge again, so many layered at these convergence points that it almost became a circle or or a star, and then away again. The way that they split and twisted and grew, it made me think of, well, it's hard to explain, but it, it, it wasn't random. It seemed organic. Like Rose's room, or like the church, but so much more deliberate. I mean, it was carved into the floor. Someone was determined. Someone. Hold on, what? 
What is that? Beeping? Uh. Hello? Come in. Okay, who's doing that? You guys locked it from the outside, remember? I can't really... <gasps> is, is someone out there? I could really use some help. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, not again. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm not listening. Lara? Ah, ah. Lara, Lara, are, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, sorry. I, I, well, I, I just was checking. Camille, um, wait. What? This is the Boone house, isn't it? How did you know that? The beeping. Reverend Boone's heart monitor. I, I can, I can feel it. What do you feel, Lara? These marks. Um, did, did Rose make them? Yes. Rose was here when the visions overtook her. You can feel that? Do you think I can't sense Rose's presence? There's so much of her here. She locked herself in here for three days a few months ago. When she came out, that's when everything began. Oh my god. The lines. Reaching. In in the dirt. I knew you could sense her. That's what I was trying to... You were supposed to leave me to Rose and then just go home. I didn't realize that you'd feel oblivion. Oblivion. Is that what you call it? Yes. There was only one way out of there. I... I see its signs everywhere. In my dreams, on the walls, in the sanctum. In the sanctum? You had a vision? What did you see? It was indescribable. Camille, help me understand. What do you worship here? The hand of God. Yes, of course. You can feel it, right? What do you feel? I... I guess I feel... Nothing. What? The sweet release of nothingness. Yes, I I feel nothing. Absolutely nothing. (laughs) I I think you should meet the others. I'd love that. Come on. Everyone, this is Lara. Hi. It was a pretty typical basement hangout room. Couches, TV, stereo. Pretty popular when Rose was in high school, I bet. (laughs) There were probably about a dozen people in there, and they were all staring at me. Lara has seen the nothingness. Come on, let's sit over here. Okay. So I'm not a cult expert, but I know a few things. Um, Rule one, never tell someone who's in a cult that they're in a cult. It'll just make them mad. So your group seems um, friendly. We try to be welcoming. It's hard because, you know, it's so easy to misunderstand. Rule two, everyone outside the cult is bad. Not just confused, like actively evil. So try to be an insider. It's so simple, though. They must not understand. You know, some people just have a really hard time with new ideas. I've noticed that. You know, people think that these things, suffering, division, are just part of life. So that's what the nothingness is, then? The end of suffering? Kind of, but it's more than that. See, pain, loneliness, isolation, these are symptoms. They mean that something is wrong. Reverend Boone explains it so much better than I can, but but we're not trying to end the world. We just want it to work the way it's supposed to. And this reaching thing? The hand of God. It it can do that? That's all it wants. Okay, well, this has been amazing, but I really think I should go check on my dog. Wait, Lara! He knows Rose better than anyone, so I'll just go get him and come right back. So if you'll excuse me... I wouldn't recommend that. Mayor Boone. They actually call me the conductor here. Sure, of course. Uh, Camille mentioned we had a new inductee who's already had her first vision of the hand of God. I figured it was probably you. Yep, that's me. 
Well, isn't that lovely? Listen, um... The Reverend would like to greet you, personally. The Reverend? Really? I, I just started teaching her the basics. It was his personal request, so... Uh, uh, of course. Lara, this is quite an honor. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored. <laughs> Rule three, never question the cult leader. Ever. I'll take her upstairs, Camille. Why don't all of you here prepare for a vision ceremony? It's been a while, after all. Sure, Mayor, um, Madam Conductor. Just conductor is plenty, Camille. Yes, ma'am. Uh, conductor. <sighs> Come on. He's asleep. Good. I swear this is the only room in the house where those people can't overhear us. Um, you can hear the beeping downstairs, actually. So talk more quietly than the beeping. Right. Um, I'm sorry, what's going on? We are going to wait until the shrooms kick in downstairs, and then you are going to go very far away from here. So all this oblivion, hand of God, resetting the world, you don't actually believe any of it? Here's what I know, Laura. You cannot find Rose. What? Rose is gone, she needs to stay gone, and you need to get away from here. I don't understand. The sacred rose. My rose. My rose in the scorched back to earth. <laughs> Mitchell? Mitchell, stay calm. Please, honey, you're confused. You. You. Hey, whoa. You will find my rose. You will bring the one salvation. <laughs> Mitchell, do you hear me? Honey, you need to let go of Rose's friend. For, forerunner, the herald. I didn't see it, but... <laughs> Sir, I think that you should rest. No, no, she is so close. You must, please, please. Mitchell? Mitchell? Is he okay? He's sleeping. He's not... He gets confused lately. Terry. Time to go. Oh, uh, okay. Down the hall, out the door, run now. If you need anything... Now! Okay, okay. Just a few more days, Mitchell. You'll see. Lara, the rest of the group's down here. Oh, um... You weren't leaving, were you? I thought you enjoyed it here. I do. I just... I got a feeling. A vision. So, I need to go now. Is it Rose? I'll come with you. No, um... I, I need to go alone. I should really come with you. But if you meditate here... No, Lara. I'm coming with you. Sorry. We are coming with you. Hey. Hi. Right. A lot of strength training in this group, I guess. What was that? Nothing. Let's, um, let's go. Great. Come on, guys. Cult rule four, getting out is a lot harder than getting in. They make sure of that. I was just going into the woods right here. Sounds good. Marcus and Juniper love hiking. They work out a lot. That's great. Next message. This is Dr. Penelope Simmons, general practitioner, calling once again to try and make an appointment. Miss Campbell, there is a serious infection emerging in the town of Charity. Source and progression of the disease remains unclear, but your assistance could be key to determining its next steps. Please be on the lookout for symptoms such as visual or auditory hallucinations, difficulty breathing, or anything that... Is that... No, it can't be. Uh, as I was saying, I, uh, hello? I, I'm not currently seeing patients. If you don't have an appointment... Richard? Is that you? It can't be. You're dead. Richard? What are you, Richard? Don't touch that. No, it's, it's, it's not Richard. You're not Richard. 
It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. Go away. You hear me? You're, you're nothing. You're nothing. 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 Message deleted. Are we getting close? I think so. I had this idea that once we got out into the woods, I could just lose them. It was getting dark, and the rain and the fog had already moved in. I stepped off the path, so there wasn't an obvious way to go. It should have been easy, right? Whoa, it is dark out here. I feel like I can barely see it all. Laura, I'm gonna hold on to your arm, okay? Oh, uh... Marcus, why don't you grab her other arm? Okay. Juniper, you stay close. It's slippery out here. Damn it. What was that? Almost there! I forgot about rule five. Don't assume cult members are stupid. Cults really like smart, well-educated people, actually. People don't join cults because they don't know better. They do it because the cult has something that they need at that moment. And then they give you more and more reasons to need them until you can't live without it. I wonder what that first thing was for Camille. So I guess when I heard Reverend Mitchell's message, I just was like, you know, I was really lost. Like, here I am, back in my hometown, this place I swore I'd get away from. I'm just getting away from this horrific relationship, and it just seemed like there was no purpose to any of it. I mean, this guy I was with at school was just... I mean, I won't get into it, but I was pretty broken. Uh-huh. And it's like, how does a loving God create a person like that and then not even warn me I'm in his path? It just seems senseless. But then... Shh. What? Are we there? Do you hear that? Hear what? Soda pop. Lara, wait. Soda pop, c come here, buddy. <gasps> it's her. Hello, Lara. Rose. Thank you so much for listening to Believer. We're so excited to be back. Your support has meant the world over the last year. And I just want to thank everyone who's sent messages or told friends about the show. I just, I can't tell you how much it mattered during this difficult time away. If you want to get in touch, you can follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at BelieverPod, or send us an email at BelieverPod at gmail.com. For transcripts, cast and crew information, and to support the show, go to BelieverPodcast.com. Following this special Halloween release, episodes will release every other Tuesday until the end of the season. Patreon supporters receive each episode one week early, along with other extras and behind-the-scenes information. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash believerpodcast. This episode was written and directed by Julie Saunders, that's me, and features the voice talents of Sarah Gorski, Rosa Delgado, David Pinion, Samantha Ronceros, Mara Hernandez, Seth Ellsworth, Julie Saunders, and Archie. Sound designed by Julie Saunders and Chad Ellis. Speaking of voice acting by Rosa Delgado, our pod cousins at Elaine's Cooking for the Soul have just returned with season two. Rosa stars as the titular Elaine, hosting a cooking show during an actual apocalypse. She's so fantastic, and she even wrote one of the episodes this season, so you definitely want to check that out. Stick around after this for a trailer for Elaine's Cooking for the Soul. Until next time, if you see strange shapes at the corner of your eyes, or, or small children with eyes like holes into nothingness, stare at you from your front step. But don't worry, it's probably just trick-or-treaters. It is Halloween, after all. But either way, you probably shouldn't invite them inside. Happy Halloween. Hello and welcome back to Elaine's Cooking Podcast for the Soul, the show that turns meager rations into eager passions. I'm your host, Elaine Martinez. Congratulations on your continued survival. 
These days, it was anything but guaranteed. What with, you know, the rise of android patrolmen, those crows who have holed up in the sewers, the persecution of dissenting bread makers, your elbow and Rob Reiner in the gut for the last jar of kimchi in a fully looted Ralph's parking lot. But along the way, we found ways to not only survive, but thrive with new friends and a fresh-ish recipes. A bougie Bloody Mary. East Asian influenced stir fry. Alternative protein. And Nasty Jane. Vegan butter I made myself. Don't ask how. I got stuck in LA during the apocalypse for avocado on toast. Find us wherever you listen to your underground survivalist cooking podcasts. <laughs>